front ends. Obviously, Calypso is the big one. I'm um, using React, so I'm um, going to hand over to Damien, who's going to talk to us about AngularJS. Um, and I'm sure we're all going to learn a lot, so take yeah. it away, Damien. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, hello, guys. So just to summarize, I'm going to be talking about three main things today, uh, AngularJS, WordPress, and how we kind of can get both of these guys working together using RESTful APIs. On top of that, RESTful, RESTful APIs are kind of the future and they're sort of picking up and the whole idea is about you know, what, what kind of functionality or, and what possibilities they open for uh, web technologies and you know, information exchange and how we can how we can sort of build websites with uh, unique functionalities and allow for this functionality to be used by other people through the web and through those uh, interfaces and web architecture. And um, I'd like to start with just giving you a few notes about myself and what I do. Um, so I actually have a web technologies degree from University of Greenwich. Um, I'm a senior web developer with approximately six years of commercial experience working on day-to-day -day basis with WordPress, um, payment gateways, a APIs, things like that. I, I worked with possibly every PHP framework you can name there, uh, different content management systems. Um, yeah, on top of that, you can check me out after the presentation. Uh, please come down, talk with me if you have any ideas, if you like the presentation, if you didn't like it, I'm more than welcome to take their criticism or just talk about the web technology, because that's why we are here, just to share our experiences and uh, get better at what we do, I guess. Um, you can check me out on my Git, my website, um, Few cool things. I did some security research in back in the days. Um, kind of funny, three years ago exactly. Um, and yeah, my my best area of interest are APIs and how we can change the web and how it works and uh, performance optimization. So I am kind of guy who loves to tweak things around to to get better delivery, better performance, better load times in terms of a uh, you know uh, website. Load times. Um, you might ask why AngularJS? What's so, what's so cool about it? Um, well, basically, it's super popular. If you, if you start as a web developer, you start, you start with HTML, then you get some CSS, and then next big step is JavaScript. And you sort of do that because JavaScript allows you to make your website dynamic, do cool stuff, do, do you know, all sorts of animations. and. And of, only after you pick up JavaScript, I guess, your next step is to, to move to scripting side languages, you know, to server side programming like PHP, uh, Java, you name it. So what's so cool about Angular? It's based on JavaScript, which, like I said, it's the third thing you pick up as a web developer, which makes pretty much any person who ever dealt with uh, building websites know at least basics of how to use uh, JavaScript. So, you know JavaScript, you know how to use AngularJS. Obviously, Angular is a library slash framework, and it requires some, you know, learning curve to kind of get get your head around it. But it's it's based on the technology you sort of know already. Um, what's so cool about it? It's client side. So everything is executed in the browser. You can write your script, and your testing platform is your browser. You don't need to set up anything other than have a machine and running browser with possibly internet connection, but not necessarily. Um, it's super popular. Like I said, every, every, every website is powered by JavaScript. Every, pretty much every browser on the planet powers JavaScript natively. You can disable it, but it, it's on there by default. So it's, uh, it's extremely popular. Another thing. You might think, OK, so what's so cool about JavaScript and Angular in its form? Well, it's, uh, basically, it's, it's super powerful because it allows you to, to get your content very dynamic, to get your websites do some cool events and, and bring, bring this interactivity to your website, where it's not just you know page with text. It's a, it's a media-driven, event-driven uh, website that engages the user and, and engages into much more profound experience. 
Um, another thing with JavaScript and, and what it does and what Angular allows you to do it through the power of JavaScript is to manipulate the HTML and DOM object. That means through JavaScript you can essentially modify and interact with every HTML element on your website. Give it some properties, hook up events to it that will trigger following events and things like that. Um, this brings the entire power of, of interactivity to, 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 your, to your website. Um, what's so cool about Angular is that it brings, uh, brings more structure to your, um, to your website as if you were to write raw JavaScript. It's kind of written many years ago. It sort of does not cater anymore for how internet and web technologies evolved. And Angular sort of gave a new fresh breath towards what you can do using JavaScript on your website. Um, one of those things is a model view controller, which is a, a common pattern of organizing your uh, file structure, organizing your, pro or your, your project architecture. Um, basically, model is responsible for all the data binding, interaction with data, uh, querying stuff of database, for example, view is everything you see on the screen. So HTML structure, possibly some, um, some data binding, echoing stuff out. So if you write some logic in model, you can display it using the view. Um, and, and there is a good connection between them because they, they allow for two-way data binding. So whatever you, you create in your view can communicate with what's in your model. And controller is sort of a link between all this three. Um, and as well, controller allows you to manipulate the routing, uh, allows you to control how your logic flows. Next thing that's really cool about Angular is that it allows you to, to create custom directives. Directives are those unique HTML attributes um, that AngularJS understands and attaches some logic or behavior to your standard HTML elements. Like in this example, we are, we are attaching a scope with name ABC to normal div HTML element. That means I can define the controller with name ABC in my model or controller and attach some functionality to it. For example, I can do one plus one and then, then display it in my div element right here. Another cool thing is uh, the power of templating. So uh, it's it's fairly new concept in web development where um, we use our templating languages to, to essentially help us get the back end talking with front end and 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 kind of keep everything organized so it's not really cluttered. We don't have to do a lot of string manipulations and echoing. If you guys have an experience with um, stuff like getting your functions in PHP and, and then trying to bring it out to, to the front end through, uh, through echoing things or you, you, you create a template file, for example, and you have for each loop and you struggle printing things out because, for example, every, every third row in your for each loop might require a site call to some internal function you wrote. But you kind of have this separation where you have your back-end functionality and then front-end, and you might end up using, using some, some functions in your, in your front-end, in your template. The idea of a templating, again, is to separate those two and, and keep them very well organized. Um, one, one of the cool things in Angular is the power of uh, binding the data. So, for example, here I am defining a word variable and this is where I instantiate it. And this is all in HTML. So essentially, once I, once I render this page out, we're going to see WordPress in this paragraph right here. And everything is done without a single line of JavaScript. It's, it's behind the scene what Angular does using the JavaScript. Um, but we don't have to, to, to achieve this result to print out variable within the template. We don't have to write a single line of JavaScript code, which is quite handy. All you have to know is uh, a bit of documentation, a bit of things about Angular and HTML, and you're good to go with templating. 
Um, another thing which brings us is what happens when we want to attach some logic to it, which is uh, essentially a, um, a application module where we can specify the controller and how the logic flows. So in here, I am specifying the scope and to the scope, I am attaching variable called word, which equals WordPress. And this, this essentially comes back here. If I didn't have this init word, it would, it would power the WordPress, uh, WordPress binding from, from the scope and print it out here. Um, so again, if I, if I don't have that, or depending on, for example, different variants or different event behavior, let's say I have a logged in user who visits my website and anonymous user who visits my website. Depending on who that is, I would want to change the, this welcome message. Again, through the controller, I can do that because, because JavaScript can identify, for example, a class that got bound to a body element like WordPress does. Whenever you log in, it, it, it appends different classes that identify whenever you're a logged in user or not. So using Angular, I can see whenever you're a logged in user or not. It's kind of, it's kind of workaround of identifying and communicating with the backend. HTML structure tells me you're a logged in user and, and depending on that, I can append different behavior um, just based on that. Um, Another, thing, another cool thing is it, it links, links together front end with back end with front end. And uh, in, 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 a way, in a way, like I said, you can, whenever you log in, for example, on WordPress, it, it appends and changes a bit of HTML structure because a, it, for example, adds a logout link next to, uh, next to your name. It prints out, prints out your username on the screen and things like that. And so HTML structure, structure changes and you can use JavaScript to, to bind different behavior based on that. And, uh, and Angular is sort of a, a merger between um, how you can manipulate HTML without ever touching server-side scripting or touching PHP. You can already, already do sort of what would, you would normally do in PHP using, using JavaScript essentially. Um, now, to give you a quick rundown of how, how data, two-way data binding in Angular works and what you can achieve with it to have interactive experience with your users is, uh, is essentially this. Take a note, uh, right now I have here in CSS coded two different classes. Um, one is called big and it just runs CSS free animation in a loop which resizes the big letters. Uh, over here, I have hidden input field, and I can change the text of it, essentially delete the word. Nothing happens. If I type shaky, it starts to shake. Essentially, I have another class, which is, which is describing this animation. Through the two-way data binding on, on the HTML using AngularJS, uh, it reapplies different class depending on whatever word is typed into the input field. For as long as I have a CSS for, for the word I typed in, CSS class defined, it will apply this class to this HTML element. So it's a, this is essentially the, the main kind of feature that Angular offers us, this two-way data binding. And this is all done using the previous example I showed, um, which is right here. Everything, everything done using HTML. No JavaScript involved. Forward. That's about what covers the, the main aspect of Angular Dress I like to talk about. Second thing is, what can we do with RESTful, what, what RESTful APIs are? Essentially, it's representational state transfer. RESTful is sort of in a simple words, uh, a set of architecture principles, uh, a set of to-dos and don't-dos of how to structure your, your application and, and make it sort of work within the standards. There isn't any sort of body that defines, like we don't have W3 standards that define how you should implement RESTful, uh, RESTful transfer protocol and things like that. It's, it's sort of up to you how you build the the application and, and, and structure it. But there are, there are some white papers on GitHub running around 
uh, I encourage everyone to, to look after them to, to kind of get your head around if you're interested in creating RESTful APIs of what to do and what not to do to sort of save yourself a bit of a headache down the road once your application, for example, runs and, and you have clients relying on it. Um, another thing is the, the APIs. So um, the essential structure is that why, why would you want to do the API? This is the very first thing I mentioned is it's, it's really cool that you, you, you sit down at home or, or do, do something at work for, for, for your client. And every time you develop something, there was probably someone before you who probably did something like, like what you're doing right now. And the idea is to, to share things with community, to, to kind of uh, not try to reinvent the wheel and, and go and you know, try to build something that someone might have already done. Um, through, the, through the application of APIs, a um, couple of years down the road projecting, we could say that if, if we focus strongly on, on trying to expose the, any sort of functionality we're going to write for our websites and try to share it with, you know, with open source community in terms of sharing your source code, but not only that, whenever you set up a website, you can, you can actually give away this, um, this unique functionality so other people can reuse it. Um, some of the good examples of APIs used nowadays are, um, for example, a Twitter or Facebook API where you can, you can tweet from your own website using the widget. Uh, it goes through all of authentication, for example. Um, so, so, so Twitter is, you don't have to go to Twitter website to tweet. And, and because they're expanding on that, they, they're allowing you to use any sort of device and even your own website to, to create tweets and share things with internet. And, and I think this is the, the future for the web. Whatever you develop, don't think of it as, well, it's, it's kind of minor and you know, it's, it's only one time thing I'm gonna develop. Try to, try to think, you know, how can you develop something that's gonna do what you're doing, but as well might actually be helpful to other people as well. Um, another thing is that, um, yeah, that's covered. What APIs offer? So RESTful API is mainly uh, CRUD-based. So it's create, read, update, and delete. And those are basically four procedures you will ever do, do using the RESTful API. You, you would either try to create, so if you, were, you know, if you were using an API for Twitter, you would probably create a tweet. So you would, you, you would use create function for, to, to hit Twitter API, um, that's going to post the body of your tweet and, and Twitter is going to accept that and, and display it on your timeline. Read, this would be to read your timeline, timeline from Twitter, for example. Update, well, if you edit your tweet or you delete your tweet, this is where those guys come in place. That's, that's as far as RESTful API goes, four procedures. Everything you have to, you have to know and understand to, to get things going, which is basically nothing. Now, um, this is an example of um, WordPress JSON API. So I have here a plugin installed on my WordPress, which is WP REST API in version 2.0, which is still in beta. And essentially what this plugin does, it, it exposes your WordPress content through the RESTful API. So you can, you can sort of, you can, you can build like separate website, which might not be a WordPress website or something else. And let's say you would want to share on your mobile app or on separate website or any other application, share posts from your WordPress blog. You can do it through exposure of RESTful API. And this is an example of how it exactly works. Um, so we can, we can hit um, forward slash posts. And this is, gonna, this is essentially going to query up all the posts on your WordPress database. One is the identifier for post ID within WordPress posts table. Um, right now, we have one post, and I am querying all the necessary information that, that makes the post page. And um, to give you an example, this is how this post page looks. Uh, it just says Angular Word sample page. Here is my post. And the content of the post is, welcome to WordPress, this is your first post, right? And 
you can you can interact with with the API using different different end, endpoints now the plugin specifies if we want to access the page I will type in page with ID one and I'm getting full output of all entire object now this comes with JSON format which is really cool because you can again go, going back to JavaScript and angular JS you can you can use uh, things like uh, things like Ajax to to request the, the JSON elements and kind of filter out and maybe com create completely unique uh, interaction and di displaying unique or filtered content you are only interested for for visitors of your website to see so instead of having an entire, entire sa like sample page like here with, with content and titles and things going on i might only be interested in in the main body content of uh, of my of my posts and i can do it with the exposure of restful api that's hooked up and requested for agent Ajax request. Now, I'd like to give you a quick experience overview of what I am facing on a day-to-day basis as a web developer and things I, you know, things, things I struggle with, things that frustrate me, some of the problems I deal with on a daily basis. And uh, like so, some of them are usually, I, I work for a digital agency most of our clients are WordPress-based clients. We, we do rebranding, design, full WordPress development, including plugin and Vim development. Now, one of the biggest struggles I face while, while in general working as a web developer is things like connecting to an FTP to, for example, edit a Vim file or a functions file to update some of the functionality, add some redirections, and things like that. And Usually it spins around editing the content of the website, but content of the website that was brought into through different plugins or through custom functionality applied uh, either by Vim or a custom plugin developed for the client. Um, some of those things, um, I'm maybe sure, not sure some of you might connect with me, where you, you, just, go to, you just go to FTP and you, you try to edit a functions file to, to, to fix, for example, a URL redirect on your client website. And, and this is usually quite frustrating because A, you need a software to connect to FTP. Then you need a, let's say you're on holiday and it's Saturday and you get the you know, client call, listen, website is not working, it's redirecting incorrectly. Uh, and you figure out, you know, you, t you typed in the wrong URL and you have to edit your plugin, your plugin function, for example. And, and you're kind of limited there. You're limited in terms of what software you use, do you have access to it? How can I get it as quickly as possible? Now, some of those things can be, can, can be worked around when we take into the consideration of how powerful the WordPress is, what it offers, and what we can do with it when we, when we connect AngularJS and RESTful APIs. Now, some of the things WordPress offers to us that we know it are coming outside of the box right away is that our widgets, we can create custom post types. So we define, we define different, dif different pages con with different content that's going to have different behavior. And this is all server side, you know, um, focus through the, through the PHP, through the extension of either functions. Vim file or the plugins you might be installing or building. Then we have taxonomies, tags, and categories. Now, what's so cool about WordPress is that it is extensible. We, we, can, we can do whatever we like with it right now. It's such a powerful and popular platform. Building full-blown e-commerce website, it's, it's like installing three plugins and just configuring them together. You can probably do it within like 30 minutes if you, if you know what you're doing. Now, another thing is Vims, and, and this is another thing. This is aesthetic thing. Clients love it. You can change how the website looks and behaves. So a lot of Vims in WordPress, they come in with bundled plugins that help you edit the content. Um, we send a, a lot of front-end visual editors that, that sort of take the, take the WYSIWYG we have in the admin area of the WordPress and bring it to the front end and things like that. But usually those plugins are extremely 
heavy, they extremely slow, they're sort of unreliable, quite often break because they depend very heavily on loads of custom JavaScript that had to be written for them. A um, few extra points, well, WordPress is the thing and it's probably gonna be the, the main thing for next next couple of years to come because it, it holds 65% of all the CMS's market. And as well, it makes 25% of all the websites on the internet, 25% of all the websites. So if you know how to develop for WordPress, you're essentially targeting 25% of all the websites on the internet and you have potential of targeting this market. Now, the fun part. So once we take Angular, WordPress and RESTful APIs and we take into the consideration some of the struggles with FTPs, with with creating those, you know, custom, beautiful looking themes and amazing functionality through, through the plugins. Um, once, once, we, once we consider what we want to do and what are the frustrations, and we realize we have WordPress, we have REST APIs, and we have AngularJS, once we mix them together, something magical happens. So here is a custom plugin I developed as a demonstration for what's possible when we merge, merge those three technologies together. Um, so this is edit page. Um, I have a short code which activates my plugin. My plugin, all it does, it includes AngularJS script and it echo out specific things on the page whenever they are requested. Now we have three things that are echoed out onto the page. One of them is so this is standard AngularJS. You can type in JavaScript here, it's going to get executed as well. Another thing is HTML code. So this is your template. This is where MVC structure comes in. Model, view of control, and you, have, you can insert your, your templated HTML. So every, every variable I have here is bound through the AngularJS code box right here. Um, for example, over here, because I have WP REST API installed here, I have exposure to specific content. So if I, if I want to access, what happens here? Yeah, thank you. Boom, okay. So, through, through the REST API, I have access to the database, which normally I wouldn't have using, uh, using JavaScript. It doesn't really interact with database. And even, even there are some custom libraries, they, they are not excellent for that. Usually, if you would want to display something of the database, you would be writing a plugin, you would be writing this code in PHP, you would have an SQL statement going on there. Essentially, through the REST API, I have access to the database. I can query all the users. I can, I can create, read, and update, and delete posts, users, pages, whatever the API exposes. Now, AP, this API is not a limit. You can create your own API, which exposes unique database features off of the WordPress. Now, if we take into consideration that through the, through the REST API, I have access to the database, I can make a uh, Ajax request to this JSON page, which lists entire object of the posts. And I can, I, I can bind it to the scope and, and I can print it out on the page using, using essentially my HTML template right here. So if I, if I view the page, this is my URL, which is defined right here, post link, post title rendered. That's the link. And here I'm displaying my post content, which is coming from here. So, and as well, I can add custom CSS. And this is all rendered. So all of a sudden, I gave Angular and JavaScript the same power that PHP would have. And this as well, sort of, if you think, think outside of the box, this free, free, free tabs for, for JS code, HTML, and CSS, they sort of allow you to create custom plugin functionality per page or per post. Because 
The, this bit of code only runs on the sample page because we are editing sample page right now. But looking forward and looking at the possibilities of, of what we can achieve, we, can, we might as well do a, a, a full driven MVC structured um, uh, code and functionality. And, and the best things about it is it's, it's all, it's all data driven, it's, it's all dynamic, it, it works both ways. Um, and it adds so much extra interactivity to, to the website. And talking about the frustrations I've been facing, um, things like FTP and stuff like that, well, having this functionality, you can essentially edit the WordPress site just by logging into it and changing the HTML content or using the AngularJS code bit to, to edit your functionality that you've written. Um, well, that's... That's about it here. And any questions? Um, I don't think there's a limitation here. You should be able to use React, absolutely. Um, you can write your own library in JavaScript. It's, it's all idea about client-side scripting here and, and the idea of connecting client-side scripting to, to that backend, right? So, so like I mentioned, the, the main limitation for client-side scripting is you don't really have database access and you, can, you can't really work with this data so efficiently. But, but because of the exposure of the functionality through REST API, you can do that. So up, you can absolutely use React or another JavaScript library. Yeah, any more questions? Sure. In your example there. Could you just wait for a mic before you start your question? Yes. <laughs> In your example there, um, were you using a plugin to create those extra fields or did you just code those extra fields as custom yeah, fields? Yeah, I actually have the, the coded plugin for that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be releasing the plugin so all of you guys can it should end up either hopefully on the WordCamp website, uh, on my schedule page with the description of my presentation. We should hopefully put the links there so all of you guys can download the plugin, play with it, see how it works. Have fun. Enjoy. Yeah? Sure. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I came to this presentation because I need to learn about Angular. I'm going to be working with a team of developers soon to help on a single page app that um, I'm going to be helping with the accessibility of. Okay. I just wondered if you had any, ex any experience of, um, of getting Angular uh, uh, applications accessible. I've heard of um, Marcy Sutton and some work she's done with NGRI. I just wondered if you had any experience of, of, of any of that side of things. Unfortunately not. To be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm very new to AngularJS myself. I, I sort of looked at, looked at it about two months ago and I maybe spent four days playing with it. So I, I haven't yet built any projects on it. Oh, right. It never required me of it. But I was interested in the technology, so I kind of got my hands around it, and this is the result of what came out of it. Right. Okay, productive four days then. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, I'm interested in your thoughts of um, building themes that are effectively single ba page apps. So instead of uh, having lots of different templates, you basically move the templates to JavaScript and yeah. you just, you, your theme effectively is just an index.php yeah. file. So what are your thoughts on, and do you think that's the future of um, WordPress theming? Well, it, it is an interesting concept, definitely. Uh, it, it, really, it really boils down to um, what you're aiming for. I, I, I seen, and an, an after the QA screen, I have here the, the credits uh, and links and as well, the presentation is going to be accessible after, uh, after the demo, so you guys can, can have a look. And as well, I coded some of the examples into this presentation as I was showing some of the, some of the credits. And uh, yeah, um, the Matt Sanders, he, he created uh, sort of what he did is he took a AngularJS one, you know, everything in one file sort of index. And he, he used Angular because Angular offers you to, to do the routing. Um, he sort of put Angular on top of WordPress. 
Now, uh, there are about two examples doing that. Um, there are some benefits of doing that. Um, and it, it really depends and boils down to, you know, what you're aiming for, uh, what you're looking for. It's, I wouldn't say um, why, so my example is different. It's sort of, I like to think of it that it, the AngularJS sits sort of within or next to WordPress. And because of, uh, you know, the RESTful API exposure, they, they talk to each other and Angular talks really well with templating. And I, I still have all the benefits of WordPress. WordPress routing, you know, if in case, if, if you would put, um, like, like Matt Sanders did with his Angular WP project, if you would put Angular with index file and, and do the routing through it and things like that, you sort of only request necessary database information of, of the WordPress, but you lose all its, all its benefits. Like, for example, if you would install WooCommerce plugin or any other plugin, the plugin, for, for, for example, deals with um, redirections or things like that, um, it would probably not work because it's your Angular that, that directs that. Now, obviously, you can edit your Angular, but that involves, you know, a lot of coding around for the functionality you're trying to implement. So it's sort of, it's, it, can, it can cap you in terms of how you want to grow your WordPress website. I hope that sort of answers your question. Again, I, I'm fairly new to Angular, so no difficult questions on Angular, please. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Sure, gentlemen in the back. How will Google interpret these pages? Sorry? How will Google interpret these pages? How Google would interpret? Well, those are as, this is essentially a WordPress, full, fully, you know, full WordPress website. It's, a, um, you know, instead of echoing content through my plugin, you know, echo function, you know, like whenever I would try to use either template echoing or stuff like that, it, it essentially renders a content using all the native WordPress stuff. So as far as Google is concerned, this is, this is full, full WordPress with, with JavaScript libraries on top of it, which is like, you know, WordPress comes with jQuery, um, Angular next to it. It's, it's you know, they, they, they like each other. It's, uh, and as well, the idea is you could possibly use Ang uh, jQuery for it as well. It just, uh, um, I think Angular has some benefits in terms of how interactive and the two-way data binding and, and those examples as I was showing where you can only add those, those HTML uh, attributes, direct Angular directives, where that's, that's the right name for it. You don't have to write a single line of JavaScript and it, it gives you this templating and it gives you um, this, this you know, already uh, variable binding essentially. Uh, but you can, you can, you can write as, yeah, you can write totally the same code using jQuery or pure JavaScript or whatever you like. Like I said, anything that's JavaScript, you can write for it, but if you have Angular and it does all that cool things, uh, why, why not use that? Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Sure. Any more? Uh, unfortunately, we've kind of run out of time for questions. Oh, no. Um, but as Damien said at the beginning, um, he'd love you to come down to the front and talk to him. Yeah, I can talk all day online about that. So, so. I would encourage you to do I'm that. Here, I'm yours. Thank you very much, guys. Um, so thanks very much to Damien. Um, obviously a... Uh...